today I'm going to focus on uh, journal indexing system because if you ask me how to become a prolific writer, the first thing you need to do is to understand the system, the journal indexing system. This is uh, what students in UTM struggle the most, uh, especially when they were asked by their supervisor to write a paper. Researchers like me will be judged based on my age index will be judged based on how many Q1 and Q2 papers published in Web of Science Journal. How many papers that uh, have been published in Scopus and Web of Science database. This is how we are being assessed. Okay, It's no longer confidential. All these informations are free to view by the public. Okay, uh, So it's quite scary, but yeah. That, that that's how it is the system these days okay so if you want to be a lecturer you have to uh adapt to the current system okay please understand why um here in university you are trained to be a prolific writer uh because of the assessment uh, malaysia research assessment okay and if you look at uh, this slide so basically, papers uh, listed in Scopus, uh, also a web of sign uh, managed by Clarivate Analytic will receive the, uh, the highest marks. Okay, so we are focusing on these two papers, uh, two databases. A few students was quite surprised why their, their, their papers published in CPCI listed in web of sign didn't receive impact factor. Okay. This is one of the issue among uh, PhD students. Okay, they keep arguing why why my paper is not um, it's not give, why the publications uh, where my paper got published uh, did not receive any impact factor. It's listed in Web of Science. The answer is you have to understand the structure of Web of Science. None of the general citation metrics of Scopus is recognized in our research university assessment. Uh, that's why students thought that since uh, Scopus also have a value similar to impact factor, so it doesn't mean your paper has impact factor. Okay, uh, one of uh, my ex students, okay, he did his uh, master by research and PhD but not under my supervision, uh, but I, I know him. So he listed all of his papers and uh, in his CV, uh, along with uh, the citation metrics. Okay, but uh, the interviewer asked him about this value because most of his journal are only listed in Scopus database, okay. In Scopus database, they have site score, they have SJR, SNIP, and when the interviewer asked him about what this value is all about, he just simply said this is impact factor. You have to understand impact factor is exclusive to Web of Science. There is no impact factor for uh, Scopus journal. Okay, yeah, and yes, he failed the interview because of that. If Scopus owned by Elsevier, Elsevier is publisher, Web of Sign is owned by Clarivate Analytics, formerly known as IP Science Business of Thomson Reuters. Previously, it was owned by Thomson Reuters. Thomson Reuters have a this subsidiary company known as IP and Science Business. And then they sold this uh, their subsidiary, bought by Clarivate Analytics, and it's become Clarivate Analytics. So. Please do not refer uh, to uh, Thomson Reuters when it comes to um, identifying journal in Web of Science because Thomson Reuters is no longer has, has nothing to do with the Web of Science. It's currently under Clarivate Analytics. Okay, and sometimes people keep saying that uh, my paper is uh, published in ISI. Do not use ISI. That was like 40 years ago. We no longer use ISI. Do you know the meaning of ISI? I will explain. Now we just simply refer to Web of Science. But journal index in Web of Science and eligible for impact factor, we call it SCI. Scopus is like a library 
one single story library with multiple shelf bookshelf it's only one single story but web of sign is like library with like a seven stories building and there are a few stories with uh what we call um secret rooms ha ah, see the good one top of the cream will be kept in this secret room only journal in this secret room at a specific floor will be given impact factor if scopus bundle everything into one single website <laughs> but web of sign is different okay the first thing you have to understand web of sign has core collection core collection is like the 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 top story okay the top story of of the library core collection and then they have regional collection this is regional collection uh, okay the the second floor and then they have this specialist uh, collection here specialist collection that's the first floor what's on the ground floor nothing just a counter for registration maybe the canteen okay vending machines so there are three collections here core collection uh, regional collection and specialist collection all of this okay but uh, all of these are listed in web of science however okay in core collection the top the top floor they have the secret room and the secret room okay on the top floor they have six different bookshelf okay uh we call it science citation index sci social science citation index as sci then we have art humanity citation index hci then we have conf uh, conference proceeding citation index cpci we have book citation index bci and the latest one remember the latest one esci okay you go to the top floor of the web of sign library there are six bookshelf however only four bookshelf is visible the other two bookshelf which is sci and sci is kept in a secret room okay and every year the librarian will issue a report a report of papers in this secret room of journal in this secret room and only journals in this secret room will be given marks basically scopus who's the owner uh the owner is elsevier okay and if you know the science direct the sign direct is another database uh, established by scopus but the function is different okay uh scopus is more towards citation but science direct is like uh, amazon you want to buy the journal instead of going to uh, every single website of the journal you just simply go to the uh, science direct science direct also owned by Elsevier. a web of sign owned by clarivet is a publisher Elsevier analytic company for the clarivet the platform it is known as scopus the website uh web of sign uh also the name of the platform accessibility is a subscription base if you do not subscribe then you cannot uh get the information unless if uh the journal is declared as open access okay open access journal can be assessed without the subscription okay type of database single just single database they bundle everything but for web of sign separate database okay they have six databases the database name also scopus but for web of sign the name of the sub database we have core collection specialist collection regional collection uh, that what confused the student okay so general metric applicable to all title but for a web of sign covered in general citation report only type of matrix if you go to scopus you have index site score simego journal rank source normalized okay uh in web of sign if you download the journal citation report it will give you h index impact factor 
uh, eigenfactor, AIS, uh, immediacy index, but we only focus, this is what uh, that count for, impact factor. Okay. Remember guys, impact factor is copyrighted and belongs to Clarivate Analytics. Means that nobody can use impact factor. Uh, these days, this figure, Asian index, is very important. Some say, uh, uh, but before I go straight to the Asian index, okay, I want to talk about some of the metrics. Uh, this is quite important. And then I will finish my presentation with Asian index. Okay. So there are many examples of tool or journal citation metrics that is used, a formula, to calculate the impact. <laughs> If I ask you if the journal is uh, is has impact factor 2.4, can someone tell me here what does it mean 2.4? <laughs> you, you, you go to your friend, hey, I have papers published in a uh, journal with impact factor 2.4. Yours, uh, uh, yours is 1.6. I am better than you because my impact factor is greater than you. But then your friends reply, yes, mine is 1.6, but mine is Q1, yours is Q2 the argument will keep continue. Every single gen paper published in that journal will receive one citation per assessment year. That's it. So if the journal has 22 impact factor, means that if I can have my paper in this journal, uh, mathematically, I will receive 22 citations per year for that single paper that you publish. That, that 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 is how we describe okay impact factor not just impact factor eigen factor samego general rank snip site score they use different formula different way to normalize but in the end the figure will tell you the numbers of citation that particular paper in that particular journal will receive in a one year of assessment so the median is one i can say that the journal that has one means that that is general is okay uh, not bad uh, not not too bad not too good one one is the median eh? the average because one side means that one journal one paper in that journal will receive one citation every year okay not bad if 0 0.5 means that one paper will only receive one citation in two years of assessment. Okay? So that's 0 0.5. 0 0.1? Let alone 0 0.1. Okay. So that's what it means. So it means that all this uh, Egan factor, general impact factor, site score, they use different formula, but in the end, they will give you the numbers that reflects the possibility, the numbers of citation each paper will receive in a one-year assessment. I have created this flowchart so that you will understand. If you go to the Scopus, okay, you go to the Scopus, then you can see the site score, SGR, SNIP. But in WOS, you cannot see the impact factor. You have to download the JCR. From the JCR, then you can see the impact factor. Okay? Uh, if you click the journal information of that particular journal, if the journal is part of the JCR, then you can see a small window of IF. But if you click further the links, it will take you to the full report of that particular journal so that you can have the uh eigenfactor and ai okay okay so now we go to the last one each index okay just because you are still doing your phd it doesn't mean you can simply ignore the h index you can build uh up your h index uh from now okay don't wait until you graduate okay what is h index basically h index h index unlike impact factor is not exclusive to any authorities okay h index is very common it's not patented means that every single database can have their own h index even the name is the common name okay 
it's not belongs to any authorities. So everybody can use H index. Okay. So basically, H index is a simple metric uh, to quantify scientific output of an individual or even the journal. But H index is more relevant to the individual. Okay. These days, our, we lecturers, unlike 15 years ago, we are now assessed based on our age index. We are now more well known due to our age index instead of uh, your character, index, uh, the way you think. Okay. So, what is the advantage? It's simple. <laughs> okay. Popular. It's popular. Okay. Uh, it is it's considered fair as it discount the uh disproportionate weight of highly cited paper that have yet to be cited yeah and but the most reasonable uh how to say this the easiest way to say why h index is uh, quite advantageous is very easy to compute okay Yes, actually, both the journal can be listed in as many databases as possible. But normally, a reputable journal, if the journal is uh, is good, uh, we consider a reputable journal, this journal will be listed in Web of Science and also Scopus. Okay. 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 All right. But uh, I can say that most, uh, not I think all of the journal listed in Science Citation Index and the web of science are also listed in Scopus. But not all journal in Scopus listed in web of science. So basically, even though I did say that Scopus is more prominent uh, in terms of how many uh, authorities institutions refer to the Scopus for, for the analysis of the data, but in terms of the privilege of having a uh, reliable measure uh, general citation metrics uh, measurement tool it still belongs to web of sign these are journal listed in uh, for instance scopus and initially they were quite honest and uh, they were evaluated by scopus they have fulfilled the criteria once they got listed in scopus then they take advantage of the listing by charging substantially okay we are not talking about publication fees most of the open access journal will charge you hundred dollars two hundred dollars three hundred dollars because uh the paper still reviewed by the uh referred and refereed you know journal still reviewed by professional reviewers okay and your paper will be evaluated accordingly and if your paper got a setup means that is of high quality but in order for you to pro proceed with the publication you have to pay because your paper will become open access so scopus journal 200 dollars 100 dollars okay that's not predatory journal the predatory journal is like this the journal assure that once you submit your papers the and you, after that you have to pay 1000 2000 dollars and ne week, next week, the paper will be published. That is predatory journal. And the sad story about this is our student has used to send to this particular journal because uh, speed publication, uh, improper evaluation, okay, you submit today, sometimes it can be published uh, after seven days. You have to pay a hefty sum of money like the two, uh, 2,000 Malaysia ringgit, 3,000 Malaysia ringgit okay and then publish but somehow that particular journal has been removed from scopus before your paper can be published not just you lost the scopus index you lost the money first the research is in line with the current trend okay uh that is the main factor uh, the second factor is it is published in the right journal, okay, R right journal, okay, and some other minor things like the journal 
uh, is co-authored uh, is co-authored uh, with uh, other prominent figures. Okay, prominent figures and also your networking. Okay, so basically that's how to get high citation. All right. 